the fathers who nurture us, care for us, support us, provide for us, and raise us. We don't take it for granted. Happy Father's Day! We are so glad that you could be with us this morning and watch us from the comfort of your couch, from the comfort of your house. We are so glad that you could be with us this morning. We continue to interact with you. Please comment on the chat from where you are watching us from so that we can see you, we can know you. And please don't forget to invite someone to church this morning. We do miss you. We miss the interactions with you. We miss the maze after the service. But aren't we glad that the Lord has given us an opportunity to interact through technology. And so this morning, I welcome you to a time of worship. Psalms 103 says, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. It says again, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So would you join me this morning together with the worship team as we worship the Lord, as we give him all the adoration, as we honor him because of who he is. Let's pray this morning. Father, we thank you for how wonderful you are. Thank you for how amazing and great you are. Today we are here to give you all the adoration and all the praise. I pray as we come into your presence this morning, we will experience you, we will encounter you, wherever we are, Lord, that we will be touched in your presence, will be renewed and refreshed in your presence. Would you have your way this morning? In Jesus' name we pray. Karibuni sana to Nairobi Chapel Lovington online service. Just wave to somebody right now. I know we still have, you know, social distancing, but you know, you can wave to somebody, get a, you know, in the elbow bump. You know? <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us online as we praise and worship the Lord. I hope you already get some space in whatever room that you're in. Invite anyone around you to dance together with. And let's enjoy the presence of the Lord. Amen. 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 Let me see you clap for Jesus. Hey. Hallelujah. Jehovah never fails. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never fails. Jehovah never fails. He will do what he said he will do. God never fails. Jehovah never fails. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never fails. Jehovah never fails. He will do what he says. God never God never fails. Yeah. Jehovah never fails. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never, he never fails. He never Jehovah never fails. He will do what he says. He my God never fails. God never fails. Jehovah, Jehovah never fails. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never fails. Jehovah never fails. He will do what he Fails. He will do what he says he will do. He said to the man, Arise, take up your bonds and walk. He never fails. Jehovah never fails. He will do what he says he will do. My God never fails. Jehovah never fails. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never fails. Jehovah never fails. He will do what he says. God never fails. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never fails. Jehovah never fails. Now this is what I want us to do. Hey, Twenty. 
Then walk, walk, walk. Come on. One more time. Turn the head. Then walk, walk, walk. He never fails. My God never fails. Jehovah never fails. He's the same yesterday. song we're gonna sing that our God hakuna mwingine kama yeye amen hakuna silaha yeyote iliyotumwa kinyume chetu itakayofaulu Hakuna silaha yeyote iliyotumwa kinyume chetu itakayo Hakuna Hakuna silaha yeyote iliyotumwa kinyume chetu Hakuna mwingine kama yeye 
loved one. There is no other God like our God. Yes. He's worthy of all our praise. He's worthy of all the glory, all the honor. And why don't you just take this moment and adore this God. I hope you've gotten to dance. I hope we've gotten to worship. I hope you've gotten to say thanks to our God through praise. In this moment, just worship Him. For He is worthy of all our praise. He is worthy of all that we are. There is no other God like our God. Come on, worship Him. For He is worthy. He is worthy. Hakuna mwingine kama wewe. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence spoken. This is my daily bread, oh, this is my daily bread, your very way, spoken. I'm the 
desperate for you. I am desperate for you, Jesus. In the moments of doubt, I'm lost without you. I am desperate for you. I need you. I need you, Jesus. I am desperate for you, and I'm lost without you, Jesus. I need you every hour. I need you every moment. Yes, Lord, though we walk through the valley, though, Lord Jesus, we doubt you sometimes, oh God, how we pray that this cry of our hearts, oh God, you shall hear us this morning, that we may get to meet with you, we may get to hear from you, Jesus. You are all we need, oh God.
And yes, Lord, we continue to trust you. We continue to believe in you and we continue to hope in you. Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 says that why are you worried? Look at the birds in the air. They do not plant neither harvest, yet me, your heavenly father, feeds them. And today, this morning, I want to encourage you, do not be worried about anything. Do not be anxious about anything. I want to call you this moment to take a single minute and ask yourself, why are you worried? What is making you anxious? I want you to take a moment and even say your name, Anne, Jack, Grace. Why am I worried? And the Heavenly Father feeds me and will take care of me. Father, we thank you this morning. Just as we have sung, our hearts will trust in you. We will hope in you. We will not be anxious. We will not be moved. Because your word has said in Matthew 6, that you will feed us, you will take care of us. And so, Lord, we lay every burden down. We lay every anxiety down. We lay every worry down at your feet, Jesus. And we ask that you may take care of it, that you may supply those needs that are in your, our lives according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. That, Lord, above it all, we will learn to trust in you, knowing that you will never leave us, never forsake us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we continue to pray and interact through our prayer chain at 5 a.m. in the morning, at 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. Even now, continue sending your prayer requests so that we can continue praying for you and entrusting your needs to the Lord. And so it is time to give. What a wonderful time the Lord has given us to honor him with our tithes and offering. The details are on the screen. And also I would want to say thank you so much for your generous giving that has continued to help us run the ministry, especially now that we are online. We also want to say thank you for all of you who have been giving towards the care park, which has enabled us to take care of the needs of the ones who are needy, especially through this difficult time. How amazing you have put a smile on these families please continue giving towards it and now when you're giving towards the care park remember to mention at the account name care park so that it can go directly to that thank you so much for putting a smile on these families and now we continue with the sermon series for this month hasn't it been amazing how the lord has been taking us through the book of daniel so far we've covered chapter one and chapter two and the Lord has been teaching us about having personal convictions, which are solely based on the word of God. And today, Pastor Judy, our lead pastor, takes us through again in the book of Daniel. And today we are discussing about three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the question is, who was the fourth man in the fire? Let's welcome our lead pastor, Pastor Judy Njerigishuru. Good morning, church. Good morning once again. We thank God for another opportunity to come together this morning and worship God together. I would like to say thank you to the worship team and Pastor Anne for leading us so well this morning. Before we continue, allow me to pray. Father, we thank you and we give you praise. Indeed, this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, as we continue with the book of Daniel today, as we look at chapter three, we ask, would you, Lord Jesus, minister to us? heavenly father thank you king of all glory because your word is powerful dear lord like a double-edged sword dear father it is able to divide between marrow and bones dear father things that have always looked like they must be together dear lord your word has a way of separating them dear lord so that your will is done and so this morning we thank you may your will be done dear father and may your word find its rightful place in our lives and it's in jesus name that we pray and give thanks amen Amen. For the sake of our visitors, my name is Judy Jerry Geshuro, and I'm privileged to be the lead pastor of the Nairobi Chapel, Lavington. This month, we started a sermon series from the book of Daniel, and the last two Sundays, we talked about the convictions that unlock the move of God. We realize that uh, it is God himself who allowed the children of Israel to be taken as captives from Judah to Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar, and there were many amazing lessons to learn 
and where convictions that unlock the move of God is concerned. We, we have mainly been looking at the life of Daniel and how he has stood out throughout this book, allowing God to use him. He risked his life twice, negotiating with the officials that they would be allowed to eat a, a, different, a different diet because they knew that the food that they were given had been offered to idols. And they did not want to partake of it because they knew that one of the reasons why they were in captivity, it is because they had worshipped idols. And so they were happy to negotiate their way so that they be allowed to eat, to have a different diet and not to partake what had been offered by the king. And in chapter 2, we also see a time where King Nebuchadnezzar Nebuchadnezzar was furious and angry, wanting to kill all the wise men because they could not interpret his dreams. Daniel goes to his three friends and they pray. After he had negotiated once more that he be given a chance to be used of God to interpret the dreams for King Nebuchadnezzar. These kind of convictions are amazing because this is a young man who is in a different country. He has no title or office, but the convictions of how he had known his God made him enter into into conversations that ideally he one wouldn't. And as a result, a whole group of people does not get killed. God reveals a vision to Daniel, and Daniel goes to the king and shares the vision with the king. And as a result, the king is so impressed, he urges everybody to worship the God of Daniel. He promotes him and makes him an officer in one of the biggest provinces in Babylon, and he gives him a lot of gifts. There are many lessons that we learned so far from chapter 1 and 2. One of them is that we all need to know the kind of convictions that we are work operating with in this season because it will take the convictions of how we know God for us to be able to step out into the season that we are in right now and allow God to use us to be a blessing to the people that he has uh, put in our lives. And so today we want to look at chapter 3. And I'm going to read from verse 1 all the way to verse 7. The Bible says, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its width 6 cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. And King Nebuchadnezzar sent word to gather together the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges the magistrates and all officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Sounds like a presidential breakfast. So the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces gathered together for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, to you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. So at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the horn, flute, harp, and lyre in symphony with other kinds of music, all the people, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the gold image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. This is a very interesting story because at the end of chapter 2 of Daniel, we saw King Nebuchadnezzar recognizing the God of the children of Israel. They knew that this is the God that reveals secrets, that this is the God that is the king of kings. And immediately in chapter 3, we see King Nebuchadnezzar has already forgotten. He has now come, to come up and put together an image where he's calling all the people, all the nations, all the officials shows to come and bow down and worship it. But this did not go very well with Daniel and their three friends. And so verse 8 says, Therefore at that time certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, in symphony with all the kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the gold image. And whoever does not fall down and worship 
shall be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not deserve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? That is a very dangerous question for King Nebuchadnezzar to ask. Because in Daniel chapter 2 verse 44, God revealed the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had through Daniel. And he said that there will be a time that even though God has given King Nebuchadnezzar permission to be the king during that time, that there were going to be three other kingdoms that would come after him. And then there would be one final kingdom. And that is the kingdom of God himself that would come and overrule all the others. And this one, this one shall be unconquerable. King Nebuchadnezzar understood that message at that point. But in this time, we see that he has forgotten because of the question that he is asking. He asks, and who is the God who would deliver you from my hands? At the end of this chapter, you will see King Nebuchadnezzar answering this question for himself. So let's see how Daniel and the three friends responded. Verse 16 says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the, burn, from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. You know, this story is known by many of us, even right from the time we were in Sunday school. And it's very possible for us to get to a point where we just see it as a story or as a fairy tale. But this is a historical event that there was a time where some young men decided to stand for their faith. It came to a time where they knew that they needed to honor God above their earthly kings. And so we see them telling the king that we know our God is able to save us. But even if he does not come through for us, we will still not bow down. What is going on that King Nebuchadnezzar seems seem to have forgotten so fast the lessons that he had learned earlier in chapter 2? So today we want to talk about the fourth man in the fire. Because indeed they were thrown into the fire. I want us to read... Daniel chapter 2, rather Daniel chapter 3 from verse 19 going forward. The Bible says, Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and the expression on his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they hit the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell down bound into the fire in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. God reveals himself again in this situation. 
So the question that we are still asking, if you look at what King Nebuchadnezzar said in verse 15, is it that he did not learn any lesson the first time? And this reminds me of a text in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 to 16, that I would like us to look at this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 to 16. The Bible says, However we speak wisdom among those who are mature, Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But, but as it is written, no eye has seen nor ear heard, nor have entered the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but with the Holy Spirit, which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing the spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can him know because they are spiritually designed. They are spiritually designed. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. This is the reason why King Nebuchadnezzar seems to be very forgetful because he has not yet submitted to the lordship of Christ. And so some things can only be spiritually discerned. Walking in revelation takes understanding what God is doing in the spirit. And that is what King Nebuchadnezzar was missing, but that is exactly the conviction that Daniel and the three friends had. They understood how to walk in revelation, and they knew how the spirit of the most high God works. The God who says in Daniel 2.44 that my kingdom cannot be conquered. They understood the secrets of the, heavenly, of the, heaven, of the God in heaven. And so that is the difference between Daniel and the three friends and King Nebuchadnezzar. And so at this point, we see the arrogance of King Nebuchadnezzar, the question he is asking in chapter 3, verse 15. And now, after he has acted out of anger and fury, we see how now God steps in. Because these people said that we know our God is able to save us. And even if he does not, we will not bow down. So we see God walking with them in the fire. And that's why we are calling today Simon the fourth man in the fire. That it does not matter what is going on in the world right now. It doesn't matter what the earthly kings think they are doing. Sometimes it's so easy to feel like a prop in the midst of a war that is against people who are looking for power and wealth. But sometimes the kings of this earth think they are in control. Because of the meetings they are having in the boardrooms. Because of the weaponry that they are preparing and that they are using to fight humanity. But today we want to remind one another that there is a God in heaven whose kingdom is above all kingdoms. The God who it doesn't matter whether his children have been thrown in the fire. He becomes the fourth man in their, in, with them, walking with them in the fire. So good people, it's been a very challenging time. God may not save us from being in the fire, but we can see that he will walk with us in the fire. It is in Isaiah 43 verse 2 that the Bible says, though you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. You will be in the waters, but you will not drown. Do you believe, like Daniel and the three friends, that no matter what happens in the space that we are in right now, because of the way the economy has been affected, some of us have lost our jobs, some of us do not even know what tomorrow looks like. Are you able to draw from your understanding of God and this morning be able to say that I know my God is able to save me, but even if he does not save me, I will not bow down. 
I want us to read Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 39. The Bible says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the confidence that we have for knowing that we have submitted ourselves to the Lordship of Christ. This is what will carry us through during this time. There were many of them, but it's not everybody that chose to believe in the God of heaven. It doesn't matter that they had seen God fighting for them. In the previous chapter, we see they would have been killed, but because Daniel stepped out and intervened on their behalf, they were still alive. Life. But the same people are the ones who goes to the king and tells him, by the way, there are people who have refused to bow down to your statue. They all forgot. And it's because of what we have seen in 1 Corinthians, that as long as we do not have the revelation of the spirit, there are things that will constantly look like foolishness to some people. But for you and I who understand, the God who said that his kingdom has the final say, we are to continue hiding in him, praying and believing in him like Daniel and the three friends had demonstrated to us, and wait and see the salvation of the Lord, because the king Nebuchadnezzar and the effects of his decision that you see today, you will not continue to see. Amen. And so we thank God for his word. And so there's a lot that we can learn from this text. There's a lot. But because of time, I would like to summarize some of the lessons that are coming out of Daniel chapter 3. That number one, what enemy meant for evil, God will always use it for the good. Look at that truth across scripture and see what God did for Joseph. See what God has done from, for different people, including his son Jesus Christ when he was on the throne. And the kings of that time thought they were in control. But the big picture here reminds us that indeed there is a kingdom that is above all kingdoms. That it doesn't matter the pains that we are going through today because of decisions that the earthly kings have made that has cost the lives of many people. That today we can still stand and wait for the salvation of the Lord. Another thing we see is that faithfulness to God is sometimes synonymous with suffering. That it is it's okay for us and as believers to go through a tough time. It's been a tough time. It is okay. As long as you know your God and what he is able to do. The Bible says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you, say you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature or complete, not lacking anything. There is some work that can only be completed through patience and through perseverance. That is going to happen for us at a national level. It's going to happen in our institutions and churches. It's going to happen in our families. And God is doing some work through patience and perseverance even in our personal lives. I don't know about you, but in this season, I have seen God and I have heard God clearly on things pertaining my leadership, the church that I'm privileged to lead, about my own life, life cannot be the same again because God used this difficult time to slow us down so that he can speak to us. Do not miss what God is doing. Do not get caught up in the details. Don't just look at the fire but think about the God of the universe, the one who is in control and the one who understands everything that is going on. It is very clear that non-believers will never understand how God is working. So if you may sound too spiritual to some people in this season, it's okay. It's because they are not walking in revelation. Walk in the revelation that God has given you. Allow God to show you the path that you will take. Because like Daniel... 
after this season, you will look ten times better. And the kings will attest to it. The nations that cry to the Lord of heaven. The world will look and wonder what happened to Kenya. It's because Kenya knew where to hide that we went on our knees. So continue joining in the prayer chain that we have in the church. Do not get weary. Do not get used of it. This is not a story. It is a historical event. What story are we going to write through our faith so that the children that will come behind us will also say that our parents were faithful? Will you be counted for it? And lastly, understand who God is. That he is the man that joins us in the fire. He has not deserted us. He is walking with you. Is your marriage struggling? He will become the third person. He will walk with you in your marriage. Is your business struggling? God will come through for you. Because he is the one who comes in and walks with us in our fire. God is walking with the nation of Kenya. Kenya will not bow down. Because we know our God is able to save us. And even if he may appear like he's not coming through for us, we know that we will not bow down because we have seen him come through for us in the, in the past. His presence has preserved us so far. He is our deliverer and we choose to worship no other God. And so I want to invite us to a time of prayer this morning. Think about your life. Are you truly convinced that your God is able with everything that is going on right now, will you make a resolve within you to not interpret your future and life based on circumstances, but instead based on the truth of the word of God? That truth is a respecter of no man. It knows no age. It desires no office. It's truth. And whoever has the truth will be set free. Walk in freedom this week. Walk like the child of the Most High King because you know our God is able. I'll welcome the worship team to lead us in a song and then we will pray together. Wanadamu awezi kutoa Unafanya mambo mbayo Wanadamu awezi kufanya Unatoa furaja mbazo Wanadamu awezi kutoa Haufana nishu na kitu And so, Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you because you are a good God. Thank you, Jehovah Father, because this morning we are reminded that we should not fear those who can kill the body, but rather fear you who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Just like Daniel and his three friends, Jehovah God, we choose that we will fear your wrath over the wrath of God. So where obedience is concerned, Jehovah God, we choose to walk in your ways for the glory and honor of your holy name. We recognize that our obedience is about generations. It's about many families, Jehovah Father. We choose not to engage in petty fights and miss the big picture. Like the person who went to report the Jews, he did not realize that it was not just about Daniel and the three friends, that there was a whole group of Jews, that through your intervention, your providence can be seen in how you unlocked their own worship, that until today, we get to call you God. So Father, we choose to look at what you're doing in this season. 
We recognize that you are the God that can allow exile, but does not mean you are an absent father, O oh God. You are the God that addresses kingdoms and the earthly kings, dear father. So where we may have felt like a prop in a war between earthly kingdoms and earthly kings, Lord, we choose to keep going in faith because we know that you are in control, that the sovereign God is in control because you never sleep and you never slumber. We honor you this morning and we give you praise. And so, Father, if there's any of us who has not given themselves to their Lord, to you, their life to you, Jehovah, we pray for them that if you are there this morning, would you invite this God into your life? Our own strength can only take us so far. Allow God to come and journey with you that no matter what you see ahead of you, that through the eyes of faith, those who walk in revelation, we look even crazy because of the things they say with conviction, just like we have seen with Daniel. And for sure, we will see that it is God who makes everything come together because in him we live, move, and have our being. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray and give thanks. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much for joining joining us during our service this morning. We would like to welcome you to join us next Sunday as we go through Daniel chapter 4, where we get to see that the Most High God rules in the kingdom of men, and He gives it to whomever He wills. God bless you and have a lovely week.